Hey, good morning. Ben here with you once again from Studio on the Lake. This is part two of the beginner wood carving series. It's about knives. So getting right to it. See the front of that uh, Ramelson there? I just ran my finger across. It was square. I made it not square because uh, it used to bump into the wood. Here's a standard whittling cut. You can see I'm holding it in my hand uh, with my fingers. Now I'm going to put my thumb against the end of the wood there and I'll cut towards that. Some people will tell you not to do that. They make a carving uh, safety glove you can put on your left hand. It's got asbestos or Kevlar and that sort of thing in it. and You can't cut your hand. I, I don't use them. I don't like them. Uh, they don't feel good to me. But they are out there and available if you want to try to keep from cutting your hand. Here's the money shot. I've got that held in my hand pretty tight. Thumb on the back and I'm using my left hand thumb to lever it in that last shot. And you'll, you'll see that once again. That is a Ramelson. There's a description of that uh, down, or uh, it's in down in the description. Several people make knives. Uh, initially you start off with an old timer pocket knife. There's one I've made that's not completely sharpened yet in the handle uh, than that Ramelson and uh, my older knife. I typically have two or three knives I'm working and that, that is my oldest one. So the grip again, got my thumb behind it and this is a whittling mark. I'm not really putting a lot of pressure on that, but I am keeping my thumb down out of the way. It's kind of like peeling carrots or peeling vegetables. That mark right there, that cut, uh, was not done with a knife. It was done with a piece of plywood thrown in the back of the truck. had nails sticking out the bottom of it. caught my hand. bought me uh, six or eight stitches. I don't remember. I have uh, only in 30 years of carving cut myself once on the left hand. Of course, I was on vacation when I was doing that and got a few stitches. But uh, other than that, no uh, significant. Here's an uh, old-timer pocket knife. came from my grandfather, passed down to my father. I've carried it around for 20, 30 years. Whittling is what they used to call this. And if you want to offend uh, some carvers with a sensitivity uh, or who are a little too sensitive, call what they're doing whittling. And they get all twisted out of shape. Call it what you want as long as you buy it. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I I'm, I'm, don't know that I'm an artist. I don't know that I'm a creator. Pick out what you want. Pocket knife will bend in the center and snap like that and cut your fingers. So not a good idea for whittling. Or good idea for whittling, not a good idea for carving. Homemade knife, two in front. Old one, new one. And the Ramelson up on the top. Kind of got a little bit of out of frame there. I apologize for that. That's my current favorite knife. It's got a really fine edge on it. It's quite uh, worn down from sharpening. It's probably 15 years old. That's his fourth or fifth handle. There's the whittling stroke once again. Here's your money shot. Stop cut. Those of you that want to learn to wood carve, stop cut. I severed the grain across the grain. And then I'm going to lever with my thumb there, thumb on the back side, doing a little bit of lever, just kind of slicing, and I'm going down into that stop, hence the stop cut portion of it. That's the whole secret to this thing. You can use a stop cut to make little wedges. You can kind of see those under my thumb on the back side, take larger chunks out, and you can go from either direction with that. So another stop cut in there coming from the opposite direction back down into that severing the grain back across. If you look at the wood video number one on how to select wood, the, the whole goal is to carve in whatever direction the grain wants to go so you're cutting it as opposed to tearing it. Now I'm going to use the tip of it, I think, here in just a second. We'll take a slice out. It's kind of like a veiner which we'll cover in the gouge portion but uh, I laid that over on the side a little bit. I'm taking a v-groove out of there. This is akin to chip carving, 
which we will briefly cover uh, towards the end. Knives for chip carving are shaped a little bit differently. This is a bench knife. When you start looking around for shopping, a bench knife will get you where you want to go. There are Swedish Sloyd knives. They're a lot heavier. Their blade's a little bit longer. It comes in a couple different lengths. Uh, a lot of the Swedish folks, uh, carving Delana horses and that sort of thing, like to use those knives. I did have one. I don't know where it's at. I, I don't use it. It's a little too thick. I like these thin knives. You have to treat them with respect because the blade will snap off on you. There's a stop cut, sort of, cutting back and forth and getting a V and removing some material. Here's a chunk of cedar. I use this to describe the grain a little bit. Cedar, as most of you know, probably has a pretty pronounced grain. It will split right down through. So I'm going to do a split off on this. I'm levering this back and forth. I'd not recommend with that thin blade, but you can see how uh, this works out. That's going to be a piece of kindling. If it were wider and I had a fro, that would turn into a shingle. That's just the nature of cedar. And there you can see again, it wants to split all the way down. So you do definitely have to use that stop cut on cedar. Not so much on the harder woods. When you go back to the beginner wood selection, the hardwoods have a tendency not to split. They kind of stop where your cut stops. But again, you will need to use a stop cut. Here's a nice stop cut. And I'm going to show you how it doesn't, how a stop cut is not supposed to work. I blew right through it. I had too much pressure on it and it came across. So my stop cut wasn't quite up to par. I'll give it another shot here. A little less pressure coming back to that. There we go. Got it to come off. Severed those grains. And, and, and a little bit of split in there, it looked like. Cedar, nice and soft. Kind of fun to carve if you get a real clear piece. There's that lever with the thumb. You use that a lot without even thinking about it. When you start figuring out how to take it, you're just trying to slice small portions off. Here I'm just whittling away, turning this stick into kindling. No useful function for that stuff there. A little harder back with the grain, as you can see. I'm not slicing it. I'm kind of tearing it off. Poof. Two knives. Brand new one at the top. Homemade at the bottom. Homemade in the middle. Not completely finished and a little bit too thick. The old timer. If you must. All right. It's a piece of that elm just to get this stuff out there. Here's a spoon gouge or a spoon knife, depending on how you look at it. They took a blade that looks a lot like the Swedish Lloyd, a little bit bigger, and bent it. This allows you to go in a circle as you would if you were building a spoon. Here's a chunk of two before, terrible, terrible wood to carve, as you're going to see in just a second. I'll give this up and, and go to a spoon blanket. <coughs> So, rough uh, coffee spoon, teaspoon, something, dotted line through the center. I want to turn this into a bowl, into a spoon, uh, hollowed out in the center. The grain's running straight up through that. I'm just kind of pulling slices off. You do need to secure this in a vise or in your bench. Holding it's not a good idea. I gave, I gave up on that nasty two before. Notice I'm taking little small pieces off, but I'm going kind of across the grain in all directions. In just a second, I'll spin this around. And I end up with a pretty smooth uh, cut out of the center of this. There, completely cutting two grains. Left and right, the grain's running uh, from 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock. And I'm just cross it, slicing right across that and getting a pretty uh, rapid little gouge in there. Now check this out. I, I prefer to use a gouge and then that spoon gauge later on or a gouge later on. The the spoon knife, if you start with it and you fall in love with it, is certainly a good tool. I didn't. I learned to do it like this with a gouge and then I'll come back with that spoon uh, knife or a gouge and uh, clean these gouges. I, this is a lot quicker taking out big chunks. If I secure that to a bench, I can get a mallet on that and go to town 
and do some damage in a hurry. So you'd come back and clean that up. Best held down as opposed to your hand. I'm not a big fan of, I typically don't stand up and carve unless I have uh, large pieces. I prefer to sit in my chair. TV going in the background in the studio and mindless. So another kind of knife for you. Got the bench knife, the ones we talked about. We got a pocket knife. We got the spoon gouge. A.K.A. specialty knife. Bench knife. Another bench knife, homemade. Lots of people make these. As I said, you look in the, I'll look up bench knife or carving knife. My old trusty homemade. Those three I'm laying in the background. Those are specialty knives. Those are chip carving knives. That's showing a uh, difference in the shape. That one's got a flat one. It kind of freaked me out for a while because I kind of expect that curve to be the cutting portion. In this case, it was the back. Here's one I built. And I built it just backwards from the last one. The curve is the cutting shape. The straight is the backbone. You can see how thin that is. As they get sharpened and worn down, they get even more fragile. Of course, you'll like them better by then after you've had it six or seven years, and you'll probably treat it a little bit nicer. Or you would have broke it a long time ago. This one should have been broke a long time ago, but it's pretty thin. It started out about as big as that one, and no longer is. Bench knife. Or carving knife, depending upon uh, how someone wants to name that thing. All right, chip carving knives. Here's the three basic shapes. In fact, this is a set. Again, they came from Ramelson down in the description. This one's got a hook. Blades are all facing down towards the screen or towards you. And they're designed for slicing. There's a little different technique in holding these knives. These are stabbing and slicing knives. So let's lay out a, this is about 12 times bigger than it needs to be. If I'm going to do a chip carving, if you look at it, it's got round shapes and square shapes in a pattern and goes over and over again. It was utilized in the old days to adorn uh, various different things and, and uh, pretty much Swedish or Norwegian in nature. So this is a stabbing knife. Notice I've got this down in there and I'm running a reference. I'm, I'm at a little bit of an angle. Turn it around. I'm going to switch knives just for the heck of it. Well, actually, I'm not. I'm going to put a stop cut in either end with this uh, wedge. And see how I'm stabbing that knife down into there? Now I'm going to come back and take that sliver out. When you saw me using the bench knife earlier, I pulled the sliver out. Well, that's the whole secret to carving or chip carving. You're pulling out a chip, and that chip will reflect light. And they typically get diamond shapes, triangle shapes, um, on the rounds, kind of a radial shell shape. So once again, put a stop cut in either end, carved at an angle, pulling out a, a chip, I don't know, maybe a 45 degree probably. I don't do a lot of chip carving. I'm not very good at it. The wood has to be really clean and... Uh, middle ground hardness. Basswood will come in at various different degrees of hardness. You want something in the middle. Not too soft to where it tears, but not too hard where you can't uh, lever this. And there's a lot of pressure uh, going into the chip carving portion. I'm cutting across the grain now to complete a square. And you'll notice this piece is a little bit too soft and it, it starts to tear out. As with any wood, if you uh, want to do some chip carving you can buy blanks that'll be a plate a uh, plaque and they'll be of higher quality basswood and then you'll uh, you'll pay for it for sure poof introduction to chip carving now you, you can uh, 
do regular carving with these knives. If you get a shape, get one of the shapes that you just kind of like the feel of it, you can uh, morph that over. Here I'm going to cut a diagonal across there real quick and give you a little more reference on what they do with chip carving. Now you'll notice I'm trying to pull slivers out of this. I'm not really trying to relief this. I'm not trying to get a shape in there. I'm just trying to pull a pattern out of the wood. I think you can see that a little better with the camera now. <coughs> All right. Chip carving. Badly done. All right. Now this bad boy's got a nice hook on it. Again, I'm, I'm levering that. You notice how, how quick and easy that slides through there. These Ramelson knives are really well made. I can't uh, talk anything bad about them. Now I pulled that center portion out of there. And I'm kind of cutting an oval from one end to the other. And you would continue on, yada, yada. You can see those slivers coming out of there. You can do that with that bench carving knife, but you need to stand it up a little more on end. This one's a little more specialized. It's got that uh, 45 angle right on the end of it. But these are the three primary chip carving knives. If you were to go look at some chip carving lessons, and there are quite a few of them out there on the web, uh, that's what you'll see is those three shapes as primary. And then, of course, whoever's teaching will have their own unique shape that they like or they grind or if they're lucky they have someone to make. So three chip carving knives at the top, bench knife at the bottom, I recommend you start with that. Big money. There's a spoon gouge and of course if you're a cowboy carrying around a pocket knife you can look cool leaning against a fence post, piece of straw in your mouth, or cutting a toothpick. Hey this is Ben for Studio on the Lake. That's the end of the knife portion of this. Leave a comment make some suggestions down there for what you need to see in the future I'll be more than happy to to make it I don't want to bore anybody this is going to be a series of uh, probably about five different ones number one is the wood number two is the knife number three I'm working on right now and that's the gouges then we'll talk about how to utilize those things and sharpen them thanks it's Ben for studio on the lake have a good day